Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am so glad that you are here. I cannot wait to talk to you a little bit about the best way to sell on Amazon in 2024. And the reason I can call it the best way is because I've tried all the other ways. For those of you which I realize in the past that I don't often give a little bit of a, a reintroduction to myself. And there's some people that are just jumping in here on episode 522 and some people are here for the first time and some of you have been here the whole time. So forgive me if you've been here the whole time and you don't, you already know who I am and what my story is. And a lot of times people go fishing for that when they, they come here for the first time. So if you are here listening or watching for the first time, I'm so glad there's a reason that you're here. I don't know what that is. I don't know where you found this podcast or where you found this YouTube video, but regardless, you're watching now. So I wanna give you a few points of establishment before I dive into making money with Amazon in 2024 and what I consider the best way. And I can say the best way because I've tried all the ways. I've put in-depth work into almost all of the ways you can make money with Amazon. And in this year, I believe that this is the best way. And I'm going to go through that. But if you've considered selling on Amazon as a side hustle or as like a full-time work from home gig, you are in the right place. I will never ever tell you that it's easy. I will never tell you that it's overnight and that's very quick. What I will tell you is that there is value in it. You absolutely can make full-time money selling in e-commerce, multiple platforms, specifically with Amazon. And Amazon, I believe, is the biggest beast to tackle when it comes to e-commerce. There's many ways to resell and sell on e-commerce platforms all over. There's more and more every day. We have everything from eBay, Mercari, Poshmark, Depop, whatnot. We, there's so many different things. Amazon is a big deal. So Shopify, do you, Etsy, Poshmark. Like There's so many places to sell things and to get started. And whether you're looking for more of a full-time, replace your income kind of online work from home experience, or you're looking for just a little bit of a side hustle to dip your toes in to see if you want to make money, I have the answers for you. I have been doing Amazon since 2008. I have been selling on e-commerce since 2003. So I am literally 20 and a half years in to my e-commerce journey, and I have made a boatload of money on multiple ways and multiple platforms. And my goal is to just share that stuff with you so that you can figure out what works best for you because guess what just right out of the gate here we're going to shoot for this and i'm going to tell you something now first stay with me here because i'm going to show you some examples over the shoulder kind of stuff i'm going to give you definitions of all the stuff to see if it's right for you guess what this is not right for everyone it is a way to make money from the comfort of your own home or on the side or however you want. You do not have to have a boss. This is a step into entrepreneurship and it's not for everyone. But for those who are willing to do it, that want to do it, that have a motivation and have a, a, an angle and they say, I want to get away from my boss or I just am tired of the schedule or maybe I have a disability and it's difficult for me to maintain a normal nine to five kind of job or whatever that may be. There's freedom and flexibility in working for yourself, but there's also some rules, some guidelines, and it's not just an overnight. You can see everybody making a, millions of dollars on TikTok, but, you know, things like that. Real established business with sustainability and long-term income freedom is going to cost you. It's not something you can start for free. So don't ever think that you're going to start some sort of online e-commerce business if you don't have any money. I'm just going to be honest about that and upfront right away. Now I can teach you how to make some money to then invest into your business. That's the beauty of this. Whether you're going big or you're stepping really, really small, I have solutions for you. But I just want to establish right out of the gate that selling on Amazon is not easy, but it's absolutely doable. There's step-by-step -step processes to follow and you can slay this dragon, but it's a dragon. So just understand that the reason people don't like to dip their toes into the Amazon marketplace is because of its complicated layers. It's true. It's not the easiest place to start, but there are easy ways to start anything one step at a time. And I'm here for that. And I'm here for you. This is what I love doing. Love to be able to help people learn what they want to learn. And so I'm here to teach you what I've learned and what's worked for me and what hasn't worked for me and what I've tried over and started over and pivoted and changed in all the different ways. So whether this is a side hustle or you're looking for a full-time gig, eventually 
after my 20 years of e-commerce experience, I've tried it all. And in this episode, I want to show you what works, what has worked for me, examples of that, and how you can get started as well. And if this isn't right for you, it's fine. Reach out to me because I know ways that you can make money online if this doesn't seem like your cup of tea. There's a cup of tea for everyone. And maybe this isn't your cup of tea, but there's something somewhere out there that you can do online in your own freedom and your own flexibility and your own budget to make it work for you. All you got to do is take the steps, knock on the right doors. You're in the right place. If any of those things apply to you, if you're looking for more of a side hustle, you're looking to work more with e-commerce and online, if this interests you, if you like the idea of even things like eBay or thrifting, or if you've ever been a reseller or you're thinking about that, or you have a knack for finding stuff that just has value, or you're brand new and you're saying, I hate my career, I want to do something different, I heard about selling on Amazon, everyone's heard of Amazon, what does it take to start an Amazon business? I got your back, I do. First of all, if that any of that stuff interests you, look forward to what we're doing in 2024. We're going to teach you multiple things about multiple platforms and ways that you can get started selling in multiple ways, whatever that means for you. We're going to offer you all kinds of different videos and training and tips and tricks. So stay tuned. How you do that is you subscribe. So make sure you're subscribed to this video, to this channel, to the podcast. The Amazon Files is our podcast, the Mommy Income YouTube channel. Make sure that you're following us on social media. We put different things in different places. You know, what we show on TikTok and what we show on Instagram is not always the same as we show on YouTube. So make sure you're following us in multiple places, however you connect. So hit the little bell here that says subscribe down here, up here, wherever it is on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed to the podcast. So you don't miss an episode that you're, you know, linking all of these different things and to all of our social media channels. That's all at mommy income. That's where we are. I'm a mommy and I'm making income from my home. And that's why we're called mommy incomes. You don't have to be a mom. You don't have to even have children. You don't even have to be female. You just have to want to earn money from home from mommy income. And that's me. I am the mommy making the income. It's not a demographic. It's just what we call ourselves here, what I've called myself here now for almost 10 years. So we're entering into our 10th year. And so now let's get to it, right? I am Kristen Ostrander. And for the past 11 years, I've been making a full-time income on Amazon. By full-time income, I mean bringing home after taxes six figures annually working for myself as an entrepreneur after taxes, working less than 40 hours a week. Why? Because I have a busy family and a busy life. I volunteer a lot. I have three children, a husband. I, I, I love people. So I have a lot of social things. I volunteer in my church. I do a lot of different things. And so I'm busy. I don't have 40 hours of work to do. I have way more than that with my family and my real life and everything else. So I work less than 40 hours. I would say my average between all of the businesses and all of the things I do, including making these podcasts and videos and selling on Amazon and eBay and other Facebook marketplace and all the other platforms that I sell on, I would say I work about 32 to 35 hours on a busy week. So less than 40. And then there's no commute. I work from home. So that's what I mean when I say full-time income. People want clarification. So I'm just being transparent. Six-figure take-home pay, working less than 35 hours a week. So already, if that's not what you're bringing home and that sounds delightful to you, stay tuned. There's more to learn right now. Now, I've tried all the different business models on Amazon. I started my e-commerce journey at eBay 2003. I sold my first item on eBay. And I did that because I had two young children, one a newborn and one a wild and crazy two and a half year old at the time. And I wanted to stay home with them. <laughs> Call me crazy. <laughs> it was kind of crazy at times. But I wanted to be the sole provider of their care. And I wanted to be home with them. And that took sacrifice. It took effort. It took, I didn't want to do the daycare all day and kind of exchange dollars for hours and be separated from them. That's just what I chose and that's what I wanted. And so I had to make that work. And at the time there was like MLM companies and like Pampered Chef and Mary Kay and things like that. There were options to work at home in 2003. I know y'all that was 21 years ago. There wasn't as much, the, the world has grown and changed so much, but then there wasn't a ton of things to do online, but eBay was established and I was, I grew up 
with very, very little means. We were, I mean, I don't want to call us poor. I don't like to use that word because I don't know that means something different for everyone. We didn't have a lot of extra money and sometimes we didn't even have what we needed. And I just wanted to make sure that we had what we needed somehow, some way. And I wanted to work from home and be able to establish. I learned how to be frugal really early on in life, how to make my dollars stretch, how to look for bargains, look for deals, look for coupons, look for sales, thrift stores, garage sales, because I wanted things that I couldn't afford. And because of that, I built what I have today. A seven figure empire, multiple income streams coming in on the regular. But that didn't just happen overnight. That happened one income stream at a time. And none of them were going to come from a boss man telling me when to show up, what shift to take, what to do, how to do it, and that my ideas sucked. I didn't like that. I didn't want to work for someone else. I wanted to establish my own boundaries, my own parameters, and I had the guts to do it. When I say guts, I mean, I was like, I will make a way or find a way because I wanted what I wanted. And that starts there. I just want you to know that. If that's how you feel and you're tired of the nine to five and you're tired of someone telling you that you have to show up at this time and you have to put this many hours in and if you do that you're going to get this pay paycheck and that's all you're ever going to get and there's no ladder to climb or there is a ladder to climb then you have to jump through a lot of hoops i don't know i don't know where you are right now and why you landed on this video or this episode and you're listening to it but i do know that there's solutions to all the problems that you have if you hate your job there are other ones there are careers, there's entrepreneurial businesses to start. And they don't always have to be e-commerce. That's what I'm good at. And that's what I'm an expert in. But maybe you have other skills. Let's explore them. I'm here for that. I'm here for you. I can help you discover what's next for you, even if it's not this. But I am here to tell you this. I started my e-commerce journey in 2003 selling on eBay because I wanted to stay home with my kids and I also needed money. And I didn't like the other options that were out there. There was the MLM companies I mentioned and some other stuff. And at that time, I think there was even some online medical billing and some things that you could do. But I was like, oh, medical billing, that just didn't sound fun and exciting to me. And I don't know, I'm fun. I like to do things that are exciting and that bring me joy and that bring, motivate me and make me want to do more. And for me, that was reselling. It was, re it was realizing that my daughter could wear a dress one time that I spent 40 bucks on. And she could wear it in her fufu Easter outfit. And then I could resell it for at least half of what I paid for it. So I got use out of it. I kept it nice, sold it, sold it to someone else. And I realized quickly that not only could I provide for some of my family's needs, like new clothing and new shoes and new toys and things like that, but I could actually earn money on top of that. To me, that was exciting because I could do it on my own terms when it fit into my schedule. Y'all. If you have little kids or if you've ever had little kids, you know their schedule doesn't keep a schedule. You can't run the clock on what they do. They don't sleep when you want them to. They don't eat when you want them to. They, they get sick whenever they get sick. There's, there's just life. And because of that, I wanted to be able to live and move and breathe and work around that life by creating income for myself. I started that with eBay. And as I was doing eBay and growing that, it started to become more and more um, profitable. And so it was working and I loved that. And then entered Amazon. In 2008, I discovered, I can't remember exactly how, I can't remember exactly how I stumbled on Amazon, but as I was selling and getting really good at eBay and starting to dig a little bit deeper into eBay and what that looked like, I discovered Amazon. And at that time it was 2008. Amazon was really mostly about books and they were starting their FBA program around that time. FBA meaning Amazon would send your items to your customers on your behalf so that every day I didn't have to sit in my office and wonder what orders were coming in and what I had to ship. I didn't have to be present to ship that. So establishing, using my skills from eBay, transferred to Amazon, started selling used books. I started going to yard sales and finding used books and using a barcode scanner to scan books and, and send them into Amazon. And as Amazon started to grow and become more of the everything store that they become and what are today, I realized you could sell more than just books. You could sell everything from toys, video games, household appliances, clothing, shoes, just everything. And that was the beginning of a whole world opening up to me. Now, 
just to be clear, I still sell on eBay because I love to. I love the thrill of the hunt, going to estate sales, going to yard sales, thrift stores, and finding that hidden treasure that someone else literally donated and left behind, and it's $2.99 at the Goodwill, and I can sell it for literally 50 bucks. I love that. It brings me joy. It brings me fulfillment and money. All of those all together. So that combination is a win-win for me. If that's something that's a win-win for you, stay tuned. We're still here. We're still talking. What, what, what I realized though, after establishing my thrifting and treasure hunting skills as like a side hustle and or those early years, I began to explore how I could make more money with e-commerce. Because to be honest, the thrifting was great, but it took a lot of work and it took a lot of effort to go out and, and thrift things and look at stuff and then come home, take individual pictures of everything, list them on eBay, store them on a shelf, and then send them to the customers when and if they purchased them. That is a great side hustle and it doesn't have to take long and can bring you really decent money. However, if you want to have a full-time six-figure salary, that wasn't doing it for me. I entered Amazon in 2008 because I wanted to scale and get bigger. I had eBay, then I was adding Amazon. With the thrifting books, then I moved to retail arbitrage. For those of you guys who don't know what retail arbitrage is, it's going to stores like Target, Best Buy, Walmart, Walgreens, Rite Aid, Big Lots, all these different stores, and buying products to resell online. So I buy products, I get a cart full of stuff from Big Lots, and I list it on Amazon and ship it into Amazon on their FBA program. That is retail arbitrage. It's taking products from one location and reselling them in another location. So arbitrage in general is that, but retail arbitrage is going from a retail store. If I'm doing thrifting, that's the same thing as arbitrage. I'm just taking it from a thrift store and putting it online instead. So when I started doing arbitrage, that was one of the beginnings of my first six-figure year. I went from thrifting only and doing books and doing eBay to then selling books on Amazon and then eventually getting into retail arbitrage. And that was a big payday for me. My first year that I did retail arbitrage, my very first year, I made over $100,000. That's the first time in my whole life for a non-college educated young mom of two kids being able to earn $100,000 from the comfort of my own home in my own way was mind blowing. I've always been told my whole life, go to college, get a good job, follow the path, climb the ladder, make the money, establish yourself, and then you might be able to make something close to that. And maybe you have some benefits. And I didn't love that timeline. I wanted something different. I wanted something that was going to bring me joy and not suck the life out of me just to climb some sort of corporate ladder somewhere. I want to do work that's fulfilling and exciting and puts most of the money in my own pocket and not always the pockets of big business or a boss or someone else. So after building retail arbitrage for so long, it was very profitable, but eventually it felt more like a prison than a career, than a job, than a business. I felt, oh, I have to go out every single week to these different stores and hope that I'm going to hit pay dirt, hope that I'm going to find the right inventory to sell at a, the right profit to continue with my goals and to continue making money. It was very time consuming and physical to scale that big with retail arbitrage. So I started exploring all of the options. What are my other options on Amazon? because I love the thrill of this hunt and I did like to go out shopping and realizing that I could walk into a Meyer store and scan their clearance and literally make $500 in five minutes by using my phone and reselling on Amazon. I still to this day love that and still do that on a very small scale. Making good money but not loving the hours and the lack of freedom and flexibility was an issue for me. I still wanted to be home with my kids. And this was starting to take away from that. So I explored all of the options. Merch by Amazon, creating shirts and clothes and different things with different designs. I'm not a designer. I tried that though because everyone said it's fast and it's easy. And it's like you just upload a bunch of designs and then the money comes rolling in. Well, that wasn't really my experience, number one. I just wasn't really good at the design. Number two, some of the systems and everything was wonky. And then the quality of the stuff Amazon was putting out with those Merch by Amazon designs were just like meh. So I tried that and I do have still to this day an income stream that comes from Merch by Amazon. 
I if with arbitrage, I was still doing arbitrage when I started wholesale. But I also realized with wholesale, the competition was fierce and the margins were really, really low. I'll give you an example. Walmart is not a margin based company. They're a volume company. Walmart makes the majority of their money on offering millions of products for very, very slim margins. So Walmart doesn't care if they're making 10 cents on Oreo cookies because they sell a million products. So if they're selling a million products in their store and they only make a dollar on each of those products and they sell multiple of those products a day, they're a volume seller. They have millions of products and millions of stores and they save their money by buying in bulk and then selling wholesale and their markup is very very small but then you'll take a store like a piano store for example they only sell pianos pianos are expensive and they make their money on their margins you might only sell two pianos per week but between five and nine thousand dollars your profit margin is probably about a grand each one maybe two grand I don't know. I'm just making this stuff up to give you guys an example of what it looks like to be volume, Walmart, Amazon, versus margin base. I'm going to sell less products and have more profit per product. I'm not going to sell as much as Walmart, but I'm going to make the same money or equal money with less effort because when someone wants a piano, they don't go to Walmart to buy a piano. They go to the piano store. They go to the experts. It's something that's very niche. It's very specific. That's what I realized on Amazon is how you win the game there. Retail arbitrage was very profitable and it's still to this day very profitable. It has a lot of risks, which I don't like taking anymore. So I'm very, very slim pickings on my retail arbitrage now because of Amazon's rules and some of their brand policies and, and IP claims and things like that. It's very risky to do retail arbitrage in 2024. It's profitable, it's possible, it's still a viable business model, but I wouldn't call it sustainable long-term. It's kind of a, it's like a short burst. It's like a, a sprint versus a marathon. I want to run a marathon business. I want my businesses and my income streams to be consistent and sustainable. I don't have to worry all the time about whether or not Amazon's going to cut me off, right? So arbitrage, yes, it's profitable, but it's not long-term sustainable. You've got to have some other options. So with wholesale, realize that the margins were very slim. I thought, okay, I'm going to buy this Barbie doll and I'm going to buy it wholesale. So say a Barbie doll is $15 at the store. I had the misconception that when I first started with wholesale, that it was going to be, I'm going to go and get that Barbie doll for $5 or $6. It's going to be at least half of retail price. Reality, when I first opened my very first wholesale account, I was super disappointed to learn the fact that on sale at the store, I could pretty much buy this item, this Barbie doll, for what it cost me wholesale. Because the deeper the pockets, the deeper the discount. Amazon and Walmart and Target are buying 20,000 Barbies at a time. I might buy 50 Barbies at a time. They're going to get a better price than me. This is just normal way of doing wholesale business. So if you buy in bulk, you usually get a better price. Amazon's pockets are deeper than mine. Walmart's pockets. So how was I going to compete selling a Barbie when I had to buy it for $9? But Amazon was selling it for 10. So I realized very quickly while I was exploring all my wholesale options that the margins were really, really thin. And yeah, you can make money, but then you have to be volume. I have to sell 5,000 units to make $500. That just didn't seem right to me. It didn't seem like the way I wanted to go. So I sat there and scratched my head and thought there's got to be a better way to do this with e-commerce because here's the problem i don't have a brick and mortar store and i can't just have shelf space and put things on there and then hope for better margins online you have fees to pay your marketplace ebay amazon Poshmark, all these places all of these options they have fees so when you have fees and shipping and things like that you have to factor that into your profit margins and if you're not getting stuff for dirt cheap it's really hard to compete. And that's the wholesale marketplace that I found. Now, 
That does not mean that there are not amazing wholesale products out there that you can go and find and research and discover. I teach how to do that. And yes, I have some really good wholesale products that do have plenty of meat on the bone, not a lot of competition. They're out there. But for the general idea, if you see it at Walmart, if you see it at Target, if you see it at some of these stores, the competition is going to be very fierce on those things. We have to be innovative here. We can't just follow the yellow brick road and expect to get to the same place everybody's getting. There's roadblocks. There's margins. If you want to sell 10,000 units a day of something and you want to move that much volume just to make a couple hundred dollars, that's up to you. I prefer to do things more efficiently, faster, easier. The easier I can do it, the faster I can do it, the better. So that's how I like to operate. So then I thought, okay, you heard a private label, right? Private label is the holy grail. It's the end all, be all. Create your own brand, create your own product, invent something or reinvent the wheel somewhere and bring it out there, have it made, have a mold made, have a sample made, and then literally create and sell your own branded products. That seems to be the top of the food chain when it comes to e-commerce. Your own brand, your own establishment, your own product lines. Okay, that seemed reasonable, that seemed right. So I tried that too. And what I found is that yes, it can be awesome. I have a couple of brands that I've created that do well, but that's not where I started, remember? Some people are starting with their own brand and they have no idea how to label a product to send into Amazon. Look, if you've never sold anything on Amazon, do not start with your own private label product. You don't start building a house with the roof. You start by a foundation. Just keep that in mind. Everyone wants to put the roof on and start painting the walls. You don't even have a basement. You don't even have a foundation laid. You didn't even purchase your property yet. And yet you're trying to put a roof on. No, slow down. There's a process for this. It doesn't have to be long, but it's definitely a one, two, three, step-by-step -step process. And we don't start out of the gate at the top. You don't start on the roof. You start in the basement. For those of you guys that don't have basements because you live in somewhere like Louisiana or, you know, low sea level areas, you know, a foundation then. Your slab, your, what you're going to build your house upon. That's where you start. Establishment. At the bottom. No one likes that. But that's how you start. Private labeling is amazing. And it's awesome. And it can add to your income streams. But no one income stream is going to do it all for you. Not in 2024. You're going to have to have multiple ways of bringing in multiple income because things change and fluctuate. By the time we figure out AI, there's something new to figure out, right? So private labeling, wholesale, retail arbitrage, eBay, thrifting, merch by Amazon, even creating my own KDP Kindle books, which I have several of, and I have done that. That's definitely a revenue stream, but there's no one revenue stream that brings it all. It's layers upon layers. But after all of this, I realized there wasn't any one thing that was a perfect fit out of all of these. They all worked in some way. And I tried all of them, straight up wholesale, straight up retail arbitrage, straight up private labeling, KDP, merch by Amazon, becoming a VA, writing for other people, creating courses and, and training. There was not any one perfect fit. All of those had some successes. So I set out specifically on Amazon with e-commerce to create the own perfect fit for me, to figure out what I wanted, what's gonna work for me. And what I realized, my unique approach to Amazon was the key to my success. It wasn't any one avenue that I took this avenue and that, it was a combination of what I figured out what worked for me and what could work long-term. And that is wholesale bundles for me. That's what I did. I took a combination of wholesaling, and private labeling, and I kind of hybrid them together. So Wholesale Bundle System is my hybrid version of what I finally figured out a formula on Amazon that was going to work for me and bring me the money that I needed to be sustainable. No more super roller coaster all the time, but something that was going to be, if I continue to repeat this process, this money will continue to come in. And that's what I figured out what Wholesale Bundle was. There wasn't any one of these other formulas that worked for me. Sure, Wholesale works. Private Label works. Retail Arbitrage works. Creating and writing your own KDP, becoming an author and writing different books and guides on Amazon, it works. But does it all work towards the goals that you want? 
Does it excite you? Is it fulfilling? Is it creative? Is it a, in a way that you want, but also meets your financial needs? And none of those were a resounding yes for me. There was always problems and flaws with each one. Retail arbitrage was great, and it was something that really paid the bills for a long time, but it was exhausting and draining, and it was risky. I got a lot of what are called pile, policy violations and IP claims and things like that from Amazon when I was doing that. They stopped receiving um, proof of purchase, like cash register receipts. That's a huge roadblock. I had to do something different. Private labeling, the first private label product I tried to launch took over 12 months and over $15,000 of money. Can you tie all that up for that long? I certainly couldn't. I thought, what is the solution? How can I kind of hybrid some of these all together to make decent money? And that's what wholesale bundle system is. So let's talk about that. You know about all these other things and how to sell products in these other ways. I made my first million dollars on Amazon using wholesale bundles, selling wholesale bundles. This is my unique hybrid business model that I call wholesale bundles. So what are they? Wholesale bundles are products that you buy from wholesale suppliers. So you're getting good bulk volume, brand new discounted products, and you're selling them like highly complimentary products. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples here in just a few minutes. If you're just listening on the podcast, you might want to jump over to the YouTube channel at this time and watch some of these examples. I'm going to give you some visuals of what a bundle is and answer some of these questions. So they're highly complimentary products purchased from wholesale suppliers, vendors, distributors, both in the United States and abroad. You can buy from wholesalers all over the world and they're sold together in a way that brings both like convenience and value to the buyer. Another term for these bundles would be things, bundles like a seller word, but like the, another term for these would be like a kit or a set. Think of like a gift basket or an entire collection of products that are a natural fit both in function and in use. So a perfect wholesale bundle would be a product combination that customers often purchase together naturally. For example, like shampoo and conditioner or accessories to popular items. So let's look for just a second at what a couple of bundles look like. Here's a good example of a bundle that is like an accessory kit, for example. This is an accessory kit that goes to a GoPro. If you haven't heard of a GoPro, it's a, you know, the camera that people use to get like live action. They use it in like BMX biking or like even my friend, the bearded picker. If you haven't checked him out on his YouTube channel, he does a lot of eBay flipping and does a lot of like live camera kind of stuff like that. So with a, a GoPro, it's really helpful to number one, have a case and have all these accessories if you're putting it mounting it on your bike and you're taking you know video of you doing some like extreme you know mountain biking or whatever then you would want a camera mount for that or you would want a selfie stick or some of these people wear their cameras like on their chest or on their hat and so these this is just an accessory kit that goes with a gopro no one would want to maybe just buy maybe you just want to have the hat strap or just a case for your gopro because when you buy a gopro you don't get any of this stuff with it you get one little accessory and one band and the camera itself and it's hundreds of dollars so buying these things separately would just not make a lot of sense you're not going to make a whole lot of money as a seller if you sell just like a single selfie stick or a single um, camera that, something that holds your gopro but if you sell everything in a kit all together like this it's an accessory kit so you increase your profit margin when you sell all of these things you bundle them together this is highly complimentary products that you can buy from wholesale suppliers and put them all into a kit so if you look at this one it comes with all of these things 60 products in one a head strap a suction cup a wrist strap a clamp the wrench and the connectors for e easy release like a, the selfie stick and the floating handle grip i mean there's so many different things that you're going to need to mount your gopro and instead of buying these things individually maybe five or six dollars your margin's probably going to be you know a dollar or two but here when you do it all together not only is your customer happy because they're buying all of these accessories all at once plus there's that added value in bundles there's always an added value that people realize i'm getting more for one price so if you look at hey i'm getting 60 items here for one price of $29.99, or if you went to another thing and you just got a carry case that was $15, it's one item for $15, or for $30, I get 60 items. Your customers are smart. They realize the value in that, and they like purchasing bundles. As you can see here, this has 4.4 .4 stars 
almost 4,256 ratings overall, and it's Amazon's choice. People love bundles. Customers love bundles. Let me ask you, what's the last bundle you bought? Is there anything you bought in a kit or set? Okay, so that's, this is an example of, of an accessory kit, accessory to something that's popular. Here's another example of that. This is a beginner guitar set. If someone's learning how to play acoustic guitar and they're a beginner, they do they need all these things? Who knows, but maybe they do. It's an extra strings, it's a tuner, it's a strap, it's a, a carry case. So you wouldn't just walk in and buy a guitar. You're gonna need all these other things. And to be real, a lot of times when you just buy a guitar, you don't get any of this extra stuff. You have to purchase it all separately. So this person has put a bundle together with multiple options, mind you. You can buy black, you can buy the natural color or the sunburst color here. And this is the Fender Acoustic Guitar Gift Bundle. And you also get an instructional DVD to give you some lessons on how to play this guitar. So you can see the value for $189.99 you have a brand new gift set that helps a beginner learn how to play guitar. So yeah, could you buy all these things separately and add them to your cart? Sure, but that takes a lot of time and energy to where Amazon customers love speed and convenience. So these are examples of those kind of bundles. Another example of a, of a bundle would be to put together products that naturally go together. So here's a gift set. It's also a beard kit. So if you have a really nice beard and you want to take care of your beard, there's a lot of maintenance that goes along with that. You need to trim it. You need to keep it nice. You don't want it to have crusties in it. And there's a certain way to use scissors and comb it in a certain way. So instead of just buying beard oil, which absolutely you can buy all of these products separately, I'm sure. Instead, for $19.99, you can buy a whole entire beard kit with all of the things that you need and even comes with the beard bible the edge razor uh, all of the different things that they've established for your beards here beard balm and the, the trimming and keeping it nice so this is a beard trimming tool kit for men again a perfect bundle because yes you could buy beard trimming scissors and you could buy beard oil and beard balm and the comb and the specific brush for your type of beard or you could get a beard kit it saves time and money and puts it all that plus it's good for gift giving did you know that gifts for men are one of the most difficult things that people have reported that are hard for them to buy for for men either some they want something that's five thousand dollars or nothing at all but yes, we still want to give gifts to the men in our lives and men in our lives want to receive gifts. So this is a good example of a bundle that's in a kit or set that helps. Now, let's go to natural things that people purchase together. Here is a curly hair, you know, brand that maybe most of most of you have heard of. This is an Aussie brand and they make multiple different hair care products, but this is the curl collection. So you could buy the shampoo, the conditioner, the miracle curls, the spray, all of this stuff separately. If you walk into Target, I'm sure you could find all of these things and they're all on the shelf and they're all sold separately. But why not put together a bundle that's all six of these curl items? I mean, considering if someone's going to buy shampoo and conditioner for their curls, why wouldn't they want to buy one of these other formulas as well? So this six piece set saves time and money. And there's also people offer coupons. There's a 40% off coupon. Can you go and get 40% off of your shampoo if you just buy it by itself? There's incentive to the buyer. These are the most important things that you have to look at when it comes to that. Another example of a bundle is this right here. It's a solution to a problem. This is a lap desk for storage and travel, for planes, for cars, for little kids that has its own carry case and you open the carry case up and you see it like this and they can color and these are crayons that are triangular clan so they're not going to roll off the lap desk while your child is trying to color on a plane or in a car or on the bus or sitting in a waiting room this is a perfectly good way to bring it helps grip it helps the crayon stay in one place there's multiple items here it has the lap desk it comes with the book and the doodle pad plus the crayons and some markers and it all comes in a little carry case here here is another idea of kind of putting a gift set together that kind of solves a specific problem this this is exactly what we mean. All of these items are purchased through wholesale 
and combined in a way that makes sense. You're taking two, three, four products, putting them together and calling it something else, travel activity kit for toddlers and kids. This is an absolute brilliant and very well done bundle. And finally, here is another option, another gift set that you see, a mommy bag. The mommy bag is welcoming. It's for pregnant women going to the hospital. It's your hospital bag. It's your baby's necessities, your mom necessities. It's got a checklist and it's maternity uh, hospital and doubles as a diaper bag. So this is another way of giving a wonderful gift set or meeting a need or solving a problem with a particular um, set of products. Now this is the combination of a private label bundle. This person has created all of these items and had their name and their brand name put on them and then also put a downloadable checklist on there that you get with that. I don't know if it's download or if it's something that comes physically. Sorry, I have to look at that because I really don't know. Um, there are ways, and this is a whole brand establishment here, so I think this is really awesome. Professionally designed in the USA, a waterproof, durable mom bag. So these are just some really good examples of what bundles are and what they can do for your business. It's a combination of buying wholesale products and creating your own kind of private label brand if you want to. Some of these things obviously have their own brands and all you're doing is com combining products that you're allowed to combine. And of course, Amazon has rules and establishments for that. But why, why do bundles do so well on Amazon? Well, the reality is bundles do really good on Amazon because your customer on Amazon wants three things. We've boiled it down to Amazon customers wanting three things. They want speed. They want two day free shipping prime. That's why they pay for prime. At the beginning before prime had video and audio and all this other stuff, they were simply, you pay a reasonable amount per year and you get two day free shipping. They tried to get it to you as fast as possible, put it on your front door so you don't have to go out looking for that. So that's speed. It's also convenient. I can order my contact solution and my lip balm and my um, granola bars on Amazon and have them delivered to my house without even leaving. I can do that while I'm in the bathroom. I can do that on a TV commercial. I can do it while I'm sitting for my daughter coming out of dance class. And of course, variety. What you can't get at Target, you can get at, on Amazon. Brick and mortar stores are limited. They only have so much square footage. They cannot keep every single shampoo brand known to man on their shelf. They just only have so much physical space. That's why Amazon is able to offer so much because they have unlimited virtual shelves. And that makes it a lot easier for them to offer 3,000 shampoo brands. But you can't offer 3,000 shampoo brands at Walmart or at Target. There's just not room. So the variety that Amazon offers is what brings the shoppers in, the speed, convenience, and variety. Amazon customers love how fast they can get their products. And bundles make it easier and faster for their purchasing process. It's more convenient for them to be like, oh, wow, instead of just constantly price checking all these different things, I see this brand new Fender beginner guitar kit, add to cart. Oh, and they're gonna ship it to me for free in two days? Brilliant. I don't have to leave my house, brilliant. I don't have to leave my work to go shopping. That means they don't have to hunt down all of those things separately and add those to the cart and then receive four or five different boxes and maybe one comes and one doesn't. And if it was a gift for somebody, you don't want it to come in four different boxes at four different dates. Ordering a gift is better in a set because you know it's gonna come all together. It's a one click purchase. I don't know about you, but that brings me speed, variety and convenience, I'm all in. Yes. I might even pay more. Most customers do. They might pay a few more dollars, maybe even a big premium to just have it delivered. Be honest with yourself. When's the last time you bought something and overpaid because you just wanted to not deal with it? You wanted to go to Amazon, add to cart, have it be delivered, and yep, you paid more, but you were okay with it because you got to sit on your couch in your pajamas while shopping. That is totally me. Bundles work. And why do they work? First thing you need to know about bundles and why they work is a little bit of a mindset shift. Those who are already established selling on Amazon, they use a lot of data to look up stuff and they look at sales rank and velocity and profit margin, all this stuff first. But to establish yourself in bundles, you need to look at things like 
the customer who will purchase this product instead of using product sourcing in a certain way you have to put your buyer's shoes on and you have to ask these following questions to create a successful bundle on amazon you need to ask yourself these questions when deciding which products to sell because if we're being real that's the number one thing that everyone always asks me how do i know what products to sell how do i know what bundles to put together you got to start somewhere we have to look at there's millions of products out there i can teach you and my wholesale bundle system teaches how to find wholesale suppliers and how to look for them and how to reach out to them and how to get their catalogs and how to establish accounts with the same people that target buys from did you know that you hear joanna Gaines and like magnolia network and all the different products they're coming out with you have access to the same vendors that target buys from you just didn't know that did you there's ways to do this and you don't have to spend tens of millions of dollars on these products but first you need to know who's looking for these types of products what will these products be used for what other products are used together or in combination with the product you're considering why does the buyer need the product what problem does it solve or need does it meet what value does your bundle bring to the customer that other people aren't bringing so let's go back to our examples and i'm going to digest some of these questions for you within the bundle so that you can see how we answer this how does this bundle meet this criteria if we go back to our bundle questions why is this a good bundle who is looking for this what will it be used for other products used together in our um, guitar bundle example here you will see well first of all who who is going to use this this is a beginner guitar set when i typed in beginner guitar set on amazon this is one of the first listings that came up it's amazon's choice it has a lot of ratings it has a lot of good almost almost five stars and of course it's by an established brand fender and this is the fender squire acoustic guitar and what do, it, it's a beginning guitar set it meets that need who will be using this someone who's just starting out wants to learn how to play guitar and needs all of the right tools to establish their new habit and what other products do people buy with guitars well the they put it together here a strap a carrying case new strings a tuner picks and i think it comes also with the tuner like the tuner key to put your to, to put your strings on so if you answer all these questions what problem does this solve well this solves a problem in that that person doesn't have to go out and look for 14 different things to add to their cart they typed in beginner guitar set and bam this comes up right away and shows you you get a case you get a tuner you get strings you get the guitar and you get a strap and picks this is and an instructional dvd this is a no-brainer for the buyer because you're meeting the need and solving the problem you're not making them shop around over and over for all these little things adding it up price checking deciding it they just get to make one decision it's add to cart 189.99 and everything that you need to get started selling a guitar is right here and this bundle this is the reason that people buy bundles so what value does this bring that is the value it is you give three different options and this is what's great about bundling as well is that if you make one bundle that's successful then you can start making a couple of varieties i'm sure they probably started out with just one one color but then they've added a couple more so it, it really adding to cart and buying it now and having it be amazon prime really shows you that this is the speed, convenience, and variety that people want when they're looking at Amazon. It brings value that other guitars don't bring because sometimes you just buy a guitar and it's by itself. It may be a beginner's kit. They're going to want and need these other things. As a beginner, they don't have all this stuff laying around. So they're going to need to purchase everything brand new. So that's how this brings value, variety, speed, and it's all wholesale items going into a bundle so that just really establishes what we need to do to create a bundling it's asking these questions are considering the buyer most people aren't considering their buyer when they're doing a wholesale retail arbitrage or even wholesale they're just thinking what's the fastest way for me to make money as a seller and although i'm not opposed to that i am definitely in the business of making a profit 
But the first question you have to ask beyond how do I make a profit is how do I serve my customers? Who are my customers? What do they want? What are they looking for? How can I meet their needs and solve their problems? That's where money comes in. That's how lawyers make money. Did you know that? You have a problem, they have the knowledge and the ability to solve it. You walk in their office, you give them a retainer, and they take you to court and go to court with you and fight on your behalf and use their experience and their knowledge to get you the settlement or to settle the lawsuit in some sort of way. You have a problem, they have the solution. The same thing is for you on Amazon. Your customers have a problems or needs. I say problems because everything to me is a problem that can be solved by a product. But your customers are looking, they have needs. They're typing into Amazon, GoPro accessory kit, beginner guitar set, curly hair products, everything that we just looked at on these bundles. By asking these questions, you're getting into the head of the buyer. This helps you provide the exact product bundle that your customers need to solve their problem. And once you do that, a whole world of possibilities open up to you. You're only limited by your own creativity. And even that doesn't have to be limited. You can be limited by your own creativity and you can get a product catalog and you can make product bundles with a catalog without even being creative. You just have to do the process, the research. If you want to learn the exact strategies that I've used in my framework that I created to earn over a million dollars on Amazon, and have a annual salary that's satisfactory that I get to work from home for less than 40 hours a week. If you want to know that strategy, just check out my free training. It's at mommyincome.com forward slash subscribe. If you want to do it with more margin, less competition, that's what I want, more margin. I don't want to do volume selling. That's why I do bundles. Volume selling is too hard. It's too much. It's too much logistics. It's too much work. I don't really like that. So instead, I like higher margins and less competition. Bundles did that for me. It solved that problem for me. Wholesale was great. It wasn't enough meat on the bone. Private label took way too long and cost way too much money and a ton of risk. Retail arbitrage was great, but it's also very time consuming, very physical. And unfortunately, there's a lot of risks involved with that with other people's brand and IP claims and proving authenticity and proof of purchase. It's just really risky. This is the best way to sell on Amazon in 2024. That doesn't mean you have to start with this either. You can start by building that foundation we talked about. We have the solutions for you at Mommy Income. After 20 years of e-commerce experience and 10 years as a teacher and trainer, I have the answers for your e-commerce issues. If you wanna learn Amazon, if you wanna learn eBay, if you wanna learn other marketplaces, make sure you're subscribed. Mommyincome.com forward slash subscribe. Get the training. See if this is right for you. And if you don't know and you still have questions, reach out. We have a team. I'll, I will talk to you personally because that's what's fulfillment for me. One of my income streams is coaching and teaching and training because I love to contribute to the success of other people. Thank you for allowing me to do that. I just wanted you to have a clear understanding of what wholesale bundles are and how they are the best way for you to sell in 2024. If you think this video was valuable, please make sure you like and share it. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you want. Also, don't forget, I love to teach you guys what I want to know, but I don't know what you want to know. So we love your comments and your feedback about, I would like to learn how to do blank in e-commerce. We got your back. Let us know. We would love to create some training videos for you to help you on your journey. So thank you for listening. I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing. I don't take that for granted. Thank you so much for listening to this episode and make sure that you like and share and subscribe and we'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.